Moving forward to uh, A, why do I pick this story? Well, J.R. Jackson uh, kind of likes USC. Uh, he kind of likes them. Uh, he went there, he was an athlete there. Yep. He was a student athlete. Crazy. Got his degree, mm -hmm. then all of a sudden said- I'm I didn't gonna, leave early for uh, TYT. I'm gonna hurdle over, because <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna hurdle over politicians and mainstream <laughs> media in this terrible, terrible joke. Uh, but what is the dumbest NCAA rule? Well, there's a lot of dumb NCAA rules. Yes. But this one definitely rises to the top. So I am not going to pronounce his last name. Do you happen to know how to pronounce it? Defend nose tackle for the USC Trojans was drafted in the seventh round by the Tampa Bay oh, Buccaneers. Oh, no, not at all. So Stevie T is what I will go with. Yeah. Uh, he's an inside pass rusher. I'm sorry, inside run stopper. But as many have pointed out, he might only be a one or two down guy, but had a terrific resume at USC. Very dominant um, at the college level. But he lived out of his car. Why did he live what? out of his car? Let's get to the article. So they're saying that basically because of the NCAA rule, they couldn't give him housing. The problem was that until, sure, was officially enrolled at USC, NCAA rules prohibited the school from giving him benefits, such as housing. But he wanted to get out to Los Angeles to begin working out, so away he went without a plan. He wound up sleeping in his car for two months, his idea. Eventually, his parents delivered his mom's 2004 brown Chevy Suburban to Los Angeles. They didn't know their son would use it as an apartment. So I get it, we talk about this all the time. There are rules that have to be followed and certain things that could break those rules. But when there is so much hype around and discussion about how that player can't sign an autograph, that player can't get a watch from a coach, that player can't be given food as special treatment, there's a difference between, hey, I'm about to go play defense for your school. I'm gonna do it pretty damn well actually if we can see into the future, I'm gonna do a good job. The Pac-12 network makes three billion dollars a year. Dollars. Not a year, I'm sorry, uh, three billion oh, dollar deal. Contract, yeah. But you can't give me a dorm room to sleep in? A and by the way, if, so it, it even goes so far as if there's like say a family friend or something. He can't that maybe stay, some yeah. kind of way associated with the school. Oh, is that like a, is that some kind of booster that's allowing his house that lives out in Encino to stay with him? A teacher can't. Uh, there was a great example once. They said if uh, one of, a teacher got, was, I wish I knew what school was. I think it's a, it's not a Pac-12 school. It's a SEC school. Basically, what happened, the short of it was, they, the player was short on cash. It was the summer. They didn't have, they had housing. He was paying for rent, and he needed work. So, his teacher said, "Hey, come." One of his teachers said, "Like, I have a big estate actually. Just." You know, landscape. If you landscape for me for the summer, I pay my landscaping guy this amount of money. You know, I like you. I'll give you a little bit more. And it was not like I'll give you ten thousand dollars in cash to mow the lawn. It was like we like you. You get twenty five or fifty extra bucks because we want to help you out. Teacher got fired. I gotta look it up. Teacher got fired, and student got in trouble and put on and became ineligible. And I think suspended for a little bit of time. It's, it, it ends up it ends up being targeted <laughs> and um, evil. Let's just keep it real. Yes. Uh, so, so from the get go, these student athletes, the bread and butter of your existence, you're a million dollar money maker, billions, but I'm talking about specifically like coaches, personnel, people who work for the school, athletic right. departments, your multi-million dollar money makers are, are kids, 18 and not kids after that, 18 to 22. And you, your target is them as the evil beings in this system that you've created to basically use them as slave labor. You can't give them too much, can't even give them a job. But if they decide to work or maybe decide to find a way to make sure they're not living in a car right. for months and they go and do something else besides maybe not attend practice, they're punished again. Why aren't you at practice? What are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. But they're students first and then athletes second. But if they miss practice because they're trying to eat and they haven't been put on your benefit system yet, then they're skirting their responsibilities with for the team which is making you millions of dollars. I don't see where this makes it makes any sense. I'm gonna tell the story because I've told it a million times mm -hmm. and I thought it was crazy. I was on the track at USC, warming up, stretching, I ran hurdles, and one of one of our female hurdlers, she is an Olympian, Ooh, um, sweet. a champion, quarter quarter mile hurdler. We're obviously we're wearing um we don't have pockets on our on our yeah, spandex. Right. <laughs> so we're wearing spandex at practice. And this dates how old I am now. She was like, oh, I need to make a phone call. It doesn't have any change because he has to go to a pay phone. We only had pages at the time. It's like 1999, around 99, 2000. So um, coach is like, 
Oh, okay, you know, I can give you some change to make a phone call. You gotta make a phone call. So I'm watching this whole thing. He drops like 50 cents, whatever on the ground, however, many, however amount of change it was. And he's like, oh, I'll just drop some change and walked away. Cause he can't, can't give, give her, her change. change to make a damn phone call because that'd be improper benefits. And I don't know if to that, to what degree that, of course, something like that, no one's watching, can't be investigated, but he's like, I'm gonna stay within whatever rules or this is, I didn't just, actually give you anything. It's the, it's the, it's the, the, in a way, the prison you're putting the mind in to have to work around certain things that should never even be thought of. Mostly because she was an Olympian and like, oh, they gave the Olympian that they recruited money. 50 cents. They, they would have given me the 50 cents straight up because they don't care if I wasn't eligible because I wasn't an Olympian champion. Did you have the, Olympic did champion. You have the dreads in college? I uh, started growing them at the end. Wow, did it aerodynamically make you slower? Um, no, they were still, like was a still more of a, I had more of the messy afro type thing oh. going, so that was actually worse than what these would have been. I've always wondered if it makes you slower. But Absolutely, we, we talk about it's James heavier. Harden in the beard. Absolutely, it's it's, yeah. it's it's a thing. James Harden in the beard. He <laughs> looks deceptively slower than he is because the beard. But these are the questions I it's ask. I don't know what me. It's ridiculous. The NCAA needs a, an overhaul of some form, and maybe we should treat our athlete students like athlete students, and it's still give them housing. I mean, you know, because we can't afford it or anything. And I mean, happy we've moved on. From it might start violating things. <laughs>